help us create the world's longest band sampler. In celebration of World Embroidery Day in 2018, SNAD launched the World's Longest Band Sampler project. We invite you to create a band of your own to add to our sampler. Since 2018, the sampler has been growing steadily. Not that it's pieced together yet, but we have had many bands come in. And in this little video, I want to show you some of those bands so that you can get a good idea on what we're looking at and what you might uh, be inspired to work with. Here we have a band that's been sent in to us by Anne Forkin, and she was one of the very first to come in. And it's a beautiful piece that has a lot of stitching, counted stitches in particular. So we see tent stitch, cross stitch, satin stitches, lots of counted here, and a little bit of open work. This one is particularly detailed, and you don't have to be um, that detailed if you don't want to be but want to show you some other examples so you can get some good ideas. But first, let's look at some historical pieces. This book is excellent. It's by Carol Humphrey, and it's from um, using the collection from the Fitzwilliam Museum, which is in at Cambridge in England. I'm from near Cambridge, so I'm very fortunate. I've seen these samplers a few times in, in my time. Um, but let's show you some of the Examples of historical band samplers. So we have here, this beautiful band is from 1680. And it shows you the different bands that are across this very narrow width of linen. Early English samplers of the 16th century were collections of repeat patterns, that you see here, and um, motifs that were worked onto narrow bands of, and strips of linen serving as pattern books for sample makers to use as reference for stitching um, different linens, handkerchiefs, tablecloths, sheets, towels, napkins, cushions, all sorts of things like that. And here we um, can see this one in particular is from the 17th century, some beautiful bands uh, on um, the white linen here in white work technique. And then we have others that are a little bit more involved in the way of colour and the different types of threads that are being used. This one's got pictorial um, picture on here, so a little bit like the one that Anne did. We have a story being told and other details and beautiful imagery or um, patterns to add to that sampler. So looms of the 16th century were not very wide, they were between six to eight inches and these samplers often had lengths three times their width, so the patterns that were stitched on the um, samplers um, across those widths, the more patterns that one could record, the longer the sampler would become. Here we have one from 1726, and it's got beautiful bold um, patterns in here, and then as you can see, borders and repeats. Alphabets were often used, and um, some are far more pictorial and they tell a story. So if any of you live in a castle and would like to include your story and, and all the animals that roam on your land, then of course that's something you can do. Um, you may t uh, write a prayer or a saying or anything that you like. And you can record um, other details as well. Once these samplers are stitched, they do become part of the projects when you send them in to us. And so you will not receive them back but we hope one day you'll be able to see them in situ when the piece gets put together. So let's talk about some information that is needed for your project. You're going to need to make your sampler a certain size. We're asking it to be three to five inches tall. So that's this is a five inch example. So between three and five inches, and we would like it to be nine inches wide a little bit wider than the looms of the day, but we want it to be nine inches and at least an inch rebate around so that we have, uh, with the seam allowance, we have plenty of space for piecing them together. Some of the content that we want you to include um, is your name, location, and um, certainly a date. I'm gonna go through some of our samples now. This first little bundle is um, looking at samples that are all counted that are um, along the traditional lines. So here we have one from Colorado Springs, initials and dated. 
This one has come from um, an Embroiderers Guild of America chapter. And uh, in this particular case, this lady, Ginny. Again, something a little more traditional with the alphabet and just two tone. You may enjoy doing um, hardanga, for instance, or um, counted open work. Here's another example of that. And you can include many things that you like. So if you like color and white work um, together, you can do that as well. Again, we have an AGA chapter being represented here. This piece has come from Chris in San Diego. There he is with his pets. You might want to do something that is a very bold border. So we have here bold colors, a bold border. Again, the date and initials. Um, people are sending their pieces in with names and addresses to them. Um, there is a form for you to fill out online. All the instructions are on our website at um, sfsnad.org. You can do black work. Here we have a lovely black work piece. And another example of black work by a lady called Lynn. You might also enjoy different techniques, not counted work. It doesn't have to be counted. Here we have a piece from Australia. This is Tambo with um, gold work embroidery there. If you can see, nice and shiny. It's by Crystal, Crystal Gay, who is taught at the school. This is one of her students' work. So we have um, beautiful um, silk ribbon and beads and pearls in there. We have had so many in that I can't show them all to you. So I've just picked across to show you different techniques and ideas. But again, ribbon work, felt embroidery, embroidery stitches to create a seam. Maybe you're a quilter. You don't know where to start when it comes to the embroidery, but you can send in a quilted patch if you would like. We also invite knitters or felters, anyone who um, works with needle arts and you'd like to be included, then the requirement of size is what you need to pay attention to, but you can put your own technique in there. This one shows added um, little ribbon flowers here, and again, some beautiful stitching for a three-dimensional rose. This is by a local lady who has used um, glow-in-the-dark floss to outline her hummingbirds in the background here. And maybe you prefer to do something that's historical, but here we have surface embroidery that is historically um, being done. And it fits again, this is by a lady called Catherine. Or you might have um, something that you really enjoy doing, like learning something new, supporting a charity, sports that you like. This one's by Fred. Maybe it's a saying that you rather like to keep in mind each day. My day is not complete until fabric thread and needle meet. I'm sure that's the same for many of us. Or it could be a place that you rather enjoy going on holiday. Or is it a film or a book that you like to read? And on here we have this lady's um, grandchildren all included. So you can do this as a family project if you would like. We have some members of the same family here who have worked on the project together. Or maybe you want to highlight who you are to your family. And of course, I had to include this one because this is by my son, Ryan, who was four at the time. This is his favourite cuddly. Um, I did help him out with the wording here, so he officially did that bit. Next, I'm going to show you just a few from across the world. So we have Australia represented. A rather fun, joyful piece, this, with um, lots of different threads for the hair. Another one from Australia with lots, again, uh, beautiful stitches for texture. 
one of the very first that we got from Christine in England. This beautiful piece from Canada, just the one shade of thread, but lots of stitching. Another Canadian piece by Kim Beamish. Here we have one from the Netherlands. And Italy. And on this one, we've got that border. We also have the seam allowance and then a little extra for us so we can cut that down. But just as a reminder, all the pieces that we are looking for are three to five inches in height, nine inches in width with a one inch seam allowance. We're looking for your name, location. You don't have to include your age. That's perfectly fine. The date of your creation. And we also encourage you to use um, things that you like in life, like add your pets or um, uh, sports, travel, imagery, image of your house. I'm going to show you the last little bundle. They're not pieced together yet, but just imagine when they do get pieced, they are going to look rather stunning one after the other on this sampler. This is a project we'll be doing very soon, starting very soon is piecing them. And that will be a, a community project as well. We're going to invite people in to work on this as a group uh, stitch in, if you like. And just to show these, pieces in their own right. We have a nice cross stitch. There's a lovely example of showing buildings. A quite lovely tonal piece there with the blue birds on. Little row of floral trees. And then a nice simple one here and again still got the details on. Now, one thing I must add um, to the end of this video, we are at this current time all dealing with the lockdown due to COVID-19. So we are not asking you to take these to the post office and shipping them to us at this time, only when it is safe to do so. Um, the project is ongoing. We will accept um, submissions for the years to come as we grow the sampler. So if you need to see the details again, please check out our website. If you search band sampler, you're going to get all the details. Um, also with some articles there. And remember there's a gallery so that you can see these pieces as they come in. And we hope yours will be joining them. Thank you very much. And we enjoy, we will look forward to enjoying your embroidery in the near future.